So, um, well, I have absolutely no idea how to start the video today, so yeah, I guess I guess this will do for the intro, the, the weirdest and clumsiest intro I've ever done, but you know, it is what it is, it's one of those days. Anyway, uh, Black Ops Fellowships are finally released, and it will be time to see what these little boats, well, little boats, they're huge ships, they're battleships, uh, they're definitely, they're anything but small. In any case, uh, I've been looking forward to get my hands on the Panther. This is not my ship, my friend borrowed me the ship to make the video for it, so I'll have to return the ship in one piece after I finish recording, so hopefully, hopefully I don't crash this thing. Uh, but I believe that the Panther I will be able to replace my old Macariel. I've been looking forward to see, to find a, a new ship basically that's uh, capable and is worthy of replacing the old Macariel. That Macariel has been in the game for three and a half, four years now, one of the first, one of the first tier 8, well, one of the first battleships to be produced uh, in the game. And it is a very important ship for me, so having that ship retired is one of my goals, because I would be very sad if I happened to lose it. And I believe this thing uh, has the potential to be a worthy replacement but of course we will see how how it will perform now i believe that we will have multiple black ops battleships and this is just the first version so definitely some interesting things are are happening here but with that being said let's check out the ship's statistics since that's the most important part here trade description uh, Robots can be fitted with Sinusol field generators. Can be fitted with Sinusol field generator. Okay, well, we have multiple uh, Sinusol field generators now, which is very interesting. It has a jump drive, which is a, a very important trait of Black Ops Ballash. They can jump around the map, which is very important. Can recognize covert Sinusol signal. Now, this uh, is also very important. Helps uh, with deep null operations well helps with deep null operations i mean it's a black ops it's it's a ship that's going to ruin someone's day that's what this that's what these things are minus 100 percent clocking device lock delay minus 50 percent clocking device activation delay minus 75 percent effect of jump distance on jump fatigue duration plus 50 percent shield extender bonus plus 50 percent armor plate hit point bonus now these ships don't have the ability to fit a covert ops clocking device. They are not covert ops ships. They have a bonus on the classic clocking device. Now, in even line, you will see that besides having the bonus on on a clocking device, lock tail and stuff, they also get a bonus on speed. And over here, we didn't get that. Now, a lot of players didn't like that, and I can see why because the clocking device is going to make your ship slow, very slow. But I believe that they'll add some speed bonus on these ships, uh, because we had the same problem with navies at one point, with navy battleships, and we all know that the navies have been buffed multiple times. So the special ops ships, the Panther here, uh, will definitely uh, get the same treatment. So we have to be patient. They'll get their speed bonus. Well, will probably not be the same bonus as in EVE Online, but they will be made fast with the clocking device. We just have to be patient. I'm uh, almost 100% sure that that's going to be the case here. They usually do change the ships after a while, so I'm not really... I'm not really... wouldn't be surprised if they do uh, add a 400 or 300% bonus on speed while cloaked. It's definitely... Uh, possible to happen in the in the next like two or three weeks. We will see. Now the other skills. These ships take advantage of the expert skills. Very similar, well, very, almost the same uh, skills as the navies. So they are very skill heavy ships. Although there are some differences that we are about to see here. So the Panther here or the Typhoon Special Ops has expert large missile torpedo bonus and has extra large can operation bonus, so you can choose to use turrets or missiles on this ship. 
With missiles, we get a plus 4% large missile torpedo damage per skill level, minus 4% large missile torpedo activation time per skill level, plus 75% large missile torpedo explosion velocity per skill level. So overall, if you have expert missile skills, if you don't have cannons, you can easily use this ship with missiles. Now, onto the cannons. Plus 4% large cannon damage, minus 4% large cannon activation time, and plus 10% large cannon accuracy falloff. So, in my case, I have better skills for cannons, so I'll be using cannons on this thing, but you can also use missiles if you have missiles. Overall, both are a bad option, but, but there's a big catch here. Please, for the love of God, don't use missiles. Actually, you know what? Actually, you, hold us. You, you know what? This might be very interesting, actually. Uh, now, I'm personally not, not a fan of messing, mixing weapon types, right? But you could technically, and I'm not saying that you should do this, but you could technically replicate a EVE online build with, with high slots. Basically, you, you have turret slots and you have missile hardpoint slots. Well, you can kind of replicate that uh, with these ships. They would look very similar on the fitting window, but again, I'm not a fan of mixing weapons, but I don't know, might be interesting. That's, you know, something that crossed my mind just just now. Extra target management bonus, probable, plus 5% scan resolution, minus 4% signature radius, expert balance recoil bonus, plus 2% flight velocity, minus 2% initial modifier, and plus 0.2 lighter maximum jump range. So, uh, you do get some pretty nice little skills for this thing. Um, uh, I'm actually quite interested in testing a lot of different builds out on, on, uh, on this thing. Now, attributes plus fittings. The Panther has two drones, eight high slots, four medium slots, six lows, three combat, and three engineering rigs. It has a very nice shield recharge. Its, it's shield recharge is very, well, it is the exact same recharge as we see on the Navy, so a passive tank is definitely uh, possible, although it doesn't have the same resistance as navies. Navies are definitely much, much tankier than the Black Ops ships. But this ship can do a shield or armor tank, and by the looks of it, they're kind of designed to be used as a passive tank, so we see a push towards passive tank uh, in the last couple months uh, with the game and uh, honestly I'm, I'm all in for for more uh, for more different variations uh, for tanking we have active we should have active we should have passive as well since passive tanking is very fun and I'm I'm definitely a fan of having uh, more passive tank you know as we <laughs> as we all know with Mimitar ships their capacitors are not that good and same goes for the Panther. 8,833 gigajoules is the capacitor. Recharge time is 893 seconds. Maximum capacitor which rate 24.73 gigajoules per second. It can lock 8 targets. 239.9 meter is the signature radius. Scan resolution 124 meters. Scan of strength 24.6. And this ship should be fast. Uh, we will see how much speed uh, I'll be able to get out of this thing. So, on to the fit. Now let me strip the ship naked since the second part of the video has already been assembled. So I'm basically just uh, making the, the first part where I uh, go with the builds. But I, I can tell you that this thing slaps. I it's a nasty little boat. So, uh, let me just cover the rigs first since I'll be using the ship with, uh, with cannons since I have better skills for cannons than missiles. But on the test server I'll definitely explore a lot and I'll go wild on the test server since this is not my ship after all. So I have cannon burst and auxiliary thrusters. So the classic build that I have. And you know it goes 301.37 meter per second. So in the high slots you could do uh, a long range strike build. Which honestly uh, is something that I've seen in EVE Online, a long range kite Panther, which honestly seems kind of scary. Uh, it can slap really hard, I would say. So this ship has uh, different variations on how you can build it. Now you can fit uh, well 1.8,000 DPS, which is fine, very close to the Macarial actually, very little difference. And I believe that's because of my skills. Now you can fit a Sinusol Field Generator. This is the classic Sinus that we all know, and you can fit that on Core tops ships on Black Ops ships. You can even fit them on uh, cruiser on uh, on frigates since that's also a 
uh, a new thing. Now we have received a new Sano module. Let me quickly go and check it out. I actually haven't looked at it uh, that much. And there is, I just realized how many modules we have. A lot of modules. Oh my god. That's a lot. Uh, there you go. So, Starlet Covert module. This is the um, one of the new ones. Sense of generation generation space for fleet cover tops. It's highly stable generation of uh, Yeah, we all know the, the description of that. So, one of the new modules added. We also have the capital fleet generator. This is fitted on versatile solo trips, I believe. Cannot be fitted on on smaller boats. So, we have three different sinos, and yeah, uh, things are becoming. <laughs> Interesting to say the least, and it's still not on the market. This one is six billion. Yeah, that costs a kidney. Oh, you'll be, oh, you will be surprised when you see the insurance price on this thing. So you can fit signals on on the ship if you like. Uh, can definitely be a bait signal ship, uh, which honestly is a very interesting idea. But in my purpose, uh, I think I'll use the ship like a core tops, although that's not exactly how how it would work, but uh, probably be used very similar to um, a cover tops, but I'll be rolling the same build that I roll on the Macarial, since you do get a nice bonus on extenders, so extender builds are going to be very good for this cute little... I, I call it cute because I, know, I, l I love the Panther, it's a uh, very interesting boat. So, uh, let me quickly do a glass PvP build, which I usually do for vast majority of my ships. Most of my ships uh, are basically, well, built the same way, since it simply works. So, you can choose armor or or basically shield. Uh, I have some armor plates here that uh, are fitted. Yeah, this is the um, battleship. Okay, I'll just add two of them. Just so I can show you how much armor you can get. Now, Mimata ships aren't really designed to, you know, take hits. They can do that, but they're mostly designed for hit and run. They're speedy. So, having tank is nice, but speed is a lot more important in most, in most cases. So, 21,000 hit points, 65,000 in armor. And we do get a very tasty little uh, armor increase per plate. I mean, that robots is definitely kicking in. Now, you can make the Black Ops tanky if you like. It's optional. The The option to make this tanky is there. You can choose if you want shield or armor. But in my case, I'll go full DPS on, on mine. At least for, uh, for the first one, we will see what I'll do uh, with the other one. So, uh, let's... Undocking see how much DPS I can get with this thing, with the current little build here. Now because of my skills, I personally don't really expect to break any records when it comes to DPS, but once I do max it all out, since I think I kind of... Uh, I, I thought I had all the skills necessary, I, I kind of have for all the sh other ships, but seems like I don't have for this thing. So, let's see how fast and how much uh, tank I can get out of this monstrosity. So, 1.7 kilometers per second, not bad actually. This is without any general units, you know, without any anything fancy. Uh, you could technically make this thing much faster if you have a nano core for it. And speaking of nano core, uh, at the moment. I think there is only one core available for this ship, which... Oh, actually, no. I, I, I pulled that back. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, we have all different sorts of nano cores available, which is good. So you can use any nano core that you like, and you have, basically. If you already had the um, Typhoon, then your old nano core will work on this ship. So you can definitely get some very crazy speeds out of this thing. If you like speed, then, you know, Mimata is definitely the way to go. 2.5 thousand DPS, you know, not bad, very close to my Macario with a different build, but you know, it's it's very close to the Macario. 
with the barrage implant engaged the DPS is 3.8 thousand which is pretty good I would say with one Jaro Stabilizer active it's 4.7 and with the second Jaro Stabilizer active it's 5.6 and we have the damage control active which can be you know, working for about 13 seconds 540,000 hit points on 65,000 armor 86, 78, 74 and 69 you can increase the armor plate of volume even more by using general units, but again, I don't have any of the units installed, so this... Uh, oh, and I messed up the plate, 800 million, oh my god, I'm... Uh, yeah. Cursed built, cursed ship. <laughs> Hold a second. Accepted. Where is... Um, yeah. This is what happens when you are recording at 3 a.m. You mess up the modules, and uh, thankfully I, I saw the, that on time. So I fitted a 800 millimeters. Should be a 1,600 millimeters because that's for battle cruisers. This is for battle cruisers. So let's see, Federation Navy. There we go. Still, that's much better. Beautiful, and a bit more. 73,000. Uh, armor hit points. Let me quickly replace the damage to, to avoid the cooldown so I can show the active stats on this thing. And you can also use a general unit on damage control so Undocking. you enhance the passive stats even more. You have a lot of options to enhance tank. But let's see how much resistance I can get out of this thing. I mean, I think it's about 600,000, but we will see. Okay, with damage all active, and we have 566,000 hit points on 73,000 armor. That's a lot of armor. That's a lot of armor indeed. And it can even be more, <laughs> easily. But it does sacrifice speed, so I'm not really a fan of the Docking armor thing, but it's possible. If you have better armor skills and shield skills, you can easily do a... Uh, a armor tank panther if, if you like that's again totally up to the player and of course their skills now let's see what I can get on the shield since shield is I, I believe the way to go since the shield extenders will not have a big uh, impact on the I think we could borrow a extender from the cells. The shield extenders will ha not have an impact on speed, but they increase your ship's signature radius by a little, a little amount. So that's you know one thing to keep in mind. I'd rather have a larger signature than a slower ship. Okay, let me quickly pull out the extender. This is the large one. Yes, it is. Okay. I love how I have million ships scattered all over the galaxy. Sometimes I just forget where I put stuff. Yeah, I know. I'm getting old, probably. <laughs> In any case, where is the panther? Where is the panther? Where is the panther? Oh, there it is. Okay, let me slap that extended into this thing. And let's see what stats I'll get with this okay so we have dual extenders now 214,000 in shield 80,000 80,000 in shield 240,000 hit points so a little bit better uh, which is expected since that's just how shield works and I, I think my shield skills are generally speaking a little bit a little bit better so let's undock and let's see the overall hot damage Undocking. stats that you can get. Now these ships are definitely tanky as I already mentioned but they are not as tanky as navies. You can definitely uh, use them with triple scrummers and be tackle with si sino tackle. I think that's a new term that we have to that we have to that we have to start using. With the damage total active we have 574,000 hit points a bit more than with uh, with the with the armor and of course you can activate extenders which you know in some cases it helps it does give you a, little, a nice little boost so damage control plus extender is a fantastic combination Docking request that accepted. you can uh, get on on the panther it's a very 
interesting combination to to say the least. So, uh, a Sino tackle. What the hell does that even mean? Well, basically, I'll use the Sino as a placeholder. You use this thing to find a target. You chonk it up. I mean, when I say chonk it up, you want to have tank rigs, of course, uh, for maximum possible tank. And you basically pick a full-on passive tank. Let me quickly assemble that. Uh, it's very easy for me to imagine that, but uh, I have to actually assemble the ship and... Okay, so basically triple that is a damage tool and tool extenders are one of the ways how to do it. With a full-on tank build you will have much better resistance. Now, you will not have the same tank as a navy of course, but you don't have to hold long because you open a sign when you drop capitals on your victim. So Undocking. Uh, that's one of the uses that I can see that these ships can have. I'll do there. Yeah, I thought I said that, that I'll do the inch. Well, guess the insurance price. Let's play a game. Let's guess the insurance price. What do you think? How much does this thing actually cost? Well, let me show you that. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Let's see. Oh my god. 24.5 billion. Nope. That's a huge nope right there. <laughs> that's a lot. Oh man, that's, that's just a lot of uh, alobies. So, uh, we have 80,000 shields, almost 400,000 hit points, 72, 75, 81, and 84. So as, as mentioned, if you go with integrations, uh, you want to combine shield resistance with shield volume. And 3P and 4P integrations would definitely be the way to go on this on this monster yeah you can get this thing to be very very tank it has a lot of shields which is always nice to have and with the damage though it has one million hit points which is pretty good more than enough to hold most ships that you can tackle and with triple scrambles you basically ensure that nothing runs now uh, Docking request accepted. this is a black ops and all of these builds didn't really show a clocking device. Yes, I know. Let's put a clocking device in this thing. Now that's where the fun begins because uh, the lack of you, you will see the lack of speed. Now you you can fit a core tops obviously since this is not a core top ship. So you, you can click on that. You can click on the core tops module all day long. It's not going to fit, but you can fit a clocking device. And now we have a clocking device on uh, on this thing, and as we can see, minus 10% flight velocity adjustment, court sensor recalculation time 30 seconds, scan resolution minus 50% recalculation time 15 seconds. All right, interesting. Now you can kind of roll with a build like this, I would say, but I don't really like to have a I don't really ha like to have no propulsion, so. I will put a micro warp drive and we'll be testing out to see if you can clock and use the afterburn and uh, afterburn and micro warp drive. I also slap a large afterburner since yeah I have one, okay, thankfully. And over here I can place one little extender. Now the extenders kind of work like the extra large extenders from Eve Online, which is very interesting. Uh, so that's definitely a uh, one thing that I like about these uh, about these ships. So let's undock and let's Undocking. see how how this works. The current build works. I would say that definitely works better if uh, you have a tanky. You know, if if you have a tank build, tank rigs and stuff like that. All right, so. How much does this thing go when it doesn't have any plates installed? Let's see. Well, it goes 1.8 kilometers per second. Well, it's fine, actually. Pretty good with the micro warp drive. Now let's see how much it goes with the afterburn. 
Smooth transition, by the way. 757 meters per second. Okay. Now, let's see. Clock and micro warp drift. Now, what happens? As you can see, the ship is not going to go fast at all. Uh, it reduces its speed, and the main thing about Black Ops in Evil Line was that extra velocity. And uh, other things, but extra velocity is also uh, very important. And as you can see, it goes. Six nice actually, not bad. <laughs> 69 meters per second clocked. So I, I can almost guarantee you that they will change the speeds. And oh, not enough storage. Let's uh well let me quickly fix that. Okay, so for the weird cuts, I basically run out of storage while recording, so yeah, let's just let's just speed up a little bit. So you can use the same builds, uh you can use this build basically if you if you want. Uh, you can also choose to go with armor, also a also a valid idea. Now you, this ship can actually lock the targets the second it decloaks, which uh, is something that not all ships can do. It's only available to Black Ops ships, Sister of Eve ships and bombers, which is uh, fantastic since you can basically immediately tackle uh, the target upon the cloaking. Now, uh, one of the ways how I might use this ship is very similar to how I roll the cells. So basically it will have a cloaking device, it will have a damage control which is uh, in very important and it will have a extender or a adaptive harder. Although in, in this case since it already does come with a bonus on uh, on extenders uh, you can just go with a extender over a uh, over a shield harder so in the end it's totally up to the up to the player so one of the builds that i see myself using is very similar to this one dual gyrostellus a extender damage control and a clocking device classic clocking device and <laughs> this kind of brings back memories from uh, from the so-called Black Ops Macarial. Well, it's not exactly a Black Ops Macarial, but yeah, it's pretty close. The Typhoon Special Ops Panther. So yeah, another of one of my crazy ideas kind of became a reality, which uh, I find pretty hilarious. But but it is what it is, and. Uh, the last build that I'll do is the PVE build. Now, you can use this ship for PVE if you like. Uh, it would work very, very nice, I would say. Should be... If you're using cannons, it will be very similar to um, uh, how the Macarial works. If you're using missiles, it will be very similar to how the Raven or the classic Typhoon works. So it is a very interesting ship because it combines both uh, turrets and missiles. So yeah, kind of a interesting little fact about this event. The build that I will use for high, this is a high sec only build. Quadro Stellars from Max and PS1 adaptive and a large booster, one of Sferatu dual webs and a scrambler. With this build, I wouldn't go anywhere outside high sec. This is a high sec only build, and I wouldn't be uh, using this in low sec because it would get destroyed in in, in seconds, uh, basically. So let's quickly check out so what's the maximum possible Undocking. DPS on this thing with this current setup, of course. And then we are going to be having some fun uh, running some missions with this thing to see how it actually feels in combat. So the module layout will be very, very similar to what I usually run. It is something like this. Okay, let's take a look at the 4.4 thousand DPS. Nice. With one Rare Stabilizer it's 5.4. With second one it's about 6.4. Third one it's 7.2 and with the last one we have 7594 96.40 dps 
not bad, pretty solid. With better skills, with better nano core, much higher than this. So pretty happy with the DPS output. Docking on request ship. accepted. All right, well, time to see how this boat feels in actual combat. Now this this ship is fairly fast. I'm, uh, I'm very surprised at its agility. Definitely faster than most battleships, although it is not exactly cruiser level warp speed like the Macariel for example, but you know it's it's speedy. And for some reason uh, my my game here is uh yeah, <laughs> it is a little bit bugged. So let me quickly dock. I don't, I don't know why this warp bug happens. Active. It happens in the worst possible moment, always happens at the worst possible moment. Imagine if you jump in a gate camp and your screen just freezes. Yeah, that's definitely a very stressful thing to uh, to experience. And hopefully, I, I don't get to experience that. Uh, so, yeah, docking or relogging basically fix this problem, which docking is what I am about to do here. So, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, uh, the the path. Well. Actually, I, I think I should start to call Undocking. this thing the Panther 1 because I believe that we will have a second version of the Black Ops ships which will be different and probably a bit more enhanced, but we will see, maybe maybe not, but uh, potentially this might be Panther 1 and in the future we might get a Panther 2. So we will see how that goes, it's a, a very interesting uh, idea that popped up in my mind since we have different versions of core top ships, there's a good chance we'll have different ships of black ops ships, who knows? It is one thing that can happen, so we will see. But based on its speed, it can technically uh, replace my Macariel, although if my friend takes the Macariel I have to fall with something that's equally as fast, so if I do decide to go with this ship, I'll have to make attack. sure that I make it warp fast faster. So maybe hyperspatial rigs with an core that has a bonus on warp. There is a lot of other things that I have to experiment with, uh, which for that I need to actually have a core, which obviously I don't at the moment, but. But once the test server is up, I'll have a field day with these new ships. But I want to uh, fly this thing as soon as possible since uh, it was one of the ships that I had my eyes on for a while. And I know you guys are very interested to see how they feel. Now how does this thing feel? Well, I have to admit, it does feel a bit weird to use cannons on a Typhoon. Uh, although I know that this isn't exactly that a phone it's a panther but but still uh, you can use missiles on it which is a very interesting little thing and this brings the question should you use six cannons and two missiles or four cannons and four missiles that, that's one thing that's is been you know, on my mind I in this video I haven't done that because I, I, I feel like it's a bit cursed to mix weapons because you know this game works in a different way and turrets and missiles are basically classified at the same while in EVE Online you have the missile and turret hard points where you can have a specific module either turret or a missile so you can technically I mean it wouldn't be let's say it wouldn't be wrong to use missiles and let's say turrets on this ship because it has a skill bonus on both but the, the main question is, would it be better to have something like that or would it be worse? Now, it's also important to note that it doesn't have any bonus on small and medium missiles. At least that's what it looks like. It, it, it has a bonus on large ones. So if you do slap some missile launchers on this thing, uh, rapid missiles are definitely doing it. Now, that kind of makes it interesting because you could technically slap six turrets and two missiles or five turrets and three missiles or four turrets and four missiles 
and in some cases having those muscles might be a lifesaver because if you get tackled by something fast and your turrets can hit, your missiles will hit and you also have some good application, good damage application and you have overall good damage on the missile. So that kind of boggles my mind a little bit because uh, we so far we haven't had a ship that could do this. They're very interesting ships because they can do uh, they can fit multiple weapon systems and they can take advantage of multiple weapon systems. So um, I guess this ship might be a uh, exception. Uh, exception. I can't talk today. In my applause. Uh, could be a. That'd be different from the usual ship because having two different weapon types might actually not be as cursed or as bad as let's say having two weapon types on a Megathron or two weapon types on a Balgor because the other ships have only one weapon system uh, only one bonus on one weapon system while this ship here has two weapon systems so I guess on the test server I'll have to test that out I will have to test out if having multiple uh, having cannons and missiles is a good idea but from my experience from what I've seen what tackle ships can do Missiles are definitely going to be a lifesaver for for some cases, especially if you get tackled by an interceptor or, or a destroyer or you know something small like that. Missiles are nasty, and typhoon with missiles is very scary. So those missiles might actually help you save your ship. So yeah, this is only in theory, although that theory is kind of also based on my combat experience from what I've seen from, from, what I've, from what my friends have said from their experience so it is half theory half actual practical use and depending on your skills uh, you will still have, I mean you, your total DPS will be pretty good so We'll have to. We'll have to try it out. It definitely feels like the old school Eve online ship with uh, with something that can fit missiles and turrets at the same time. Well, I mean, most battleships can fit missiles and turrets, but on most battleships, it's not a good idea to do that. Uh, with with this thing, it might be a smart, well, smart, might be an interesting idea, and we will see how things progress. But this, this update, besides the nanocore stuff, I would say this update is pretty interesting because we, we have received new ships, new very interesting ships. They're, they're actually more interesting than I thought because I didn't really look too deep into the skills. Uh, mostly I, I wanted to keep that original, you know, surprise element uh, for the video. But they're, they're very interesting ships and very very happy to to have a chance to fly one early on although this is not my ship I have to return it but uh, this experience is going to be very valuable because it is going to decide whether or not I'll be replacing my Makari with a Panther from what I've seen so far it's a very good candidate to be a to be a replacement now the problem that a lot of players will have with these ships is the IP cost. 24 bloody billion for a battleship. Yeah, it's it's much. It's a lot. Maybe it will be reduced. We will see how that goes. Uh, this ship is at the moment uh, not available through the boxes. Which is, which is a surprise. I mean, I have no idea. I, I don't know what to say about this, about this anymore, but they released navy sweet boxes, they released special, special cruiser sweet boxes, they released navy free sweet boxes. Everyone expected to find these ships coming from boxes, but there is no box for them. Well, actually, te technically, there, there is one box from the, I think, from the Concord Pass. You have to level up to 20, I believe, and then you get the box for one free, uh, one Black Ops battleship. But there is no box. The net, the, the previous way that we had, no box Auto in the store for for these ships. So you actually have to manufacture them. You actually have to get the blueprint. You have to get the materials. You have to, you know, uh, spend time building this thing. Or 
Warp drive you basically active. get the Concord Pass all 20 and get one, only one. So you, you can't spam them, you have the option to get only one. So, yeah. Uh, it is a ship that's going to hold, it, it feels like it's going to hold value. Uh, at least at the moment, maybe down the road they make them available out of the boxes, but at the moment there is not any boxy way, box way to get, you know, to get this thing. Uh, easily so We're you either have to attack. get the pass to level 20 or you have to level up something to level 20 i think it, it's We're the pass it should be the pass or you have to manufacture ship from scratch so yeah um i have no idea how much it actually costs to build it i've seen the market price the, the market prices made me faint almost <laughs> 45 50 billion i think i see, seen one for 80 billion the prices on these things are insane, so yeah. Um, if you decide to build these things, I would say now might be the, the moment while it's fresh and while it's the hot new thing and while it's super expensive. You might be able to make a lot of ISK from selling these ships. I know my friends are doing that right now. Uh, I, I can't do that right now because I don't have mat actually I need the blueprints I have materials I don't have the blueprints uh, yeah that's the problem I, uh, I don't have the blueprints but but yeah uh, I, I know players who are farming east by by building and selling stuff so could be right now could be a a very legit way of short-term investment for a lot of isk which is fine I, I don't really play the market game a lot i i play the the but i don't play the market pvp i play the other pvp but market pvp and market is also a game for itself but let's talk about the performance a little bit before i get sidetracked again uh, the performance i mean it slaps i i already said that this thing slaps it's a very interesting ship to use. It has the potential to have higher DPS than the Macario, although the price tag. Well, the price tag. I would say the Macario is definitely cheaper, but this thing does a lot more than the Macario. So, while DPS isn't its main thing, it can dish out some very good DPS. So, if you want to use the Black Ops as a standalone solo ship or a ship for low sec hunting or for pvp for low sec pvp for no sec pvp it can do all of these roles really well and besides that it can also be sneaky uh, of course the sneaky part is a bit uh, more difficult to pull off with the reduced speed but as they mentioned there's a good chance that they increase the speed very soon as they did increase the well as they did reduce this the shield recharge on the navies as they buffed them as they gave them more tank they will change the ships as well so it will get more speed at one point but well, it should get more speed because it's a black ops after all so in order to fulfill its role much efficiently it should get extra speed Probably not going to be the same bonus as on EVE Online, but it should get a pretty uh, beefy bonus on a Velocity while cloaked, so we'll be paying a close eye on that, since that's one thing uh, that has to be changed with these ships at the moment. They have to be faster while being cloaked in order to fulfill their role. But, as already mentioned, they already kind of fulfill the role really well besides the speed part but they already can open sign anywhere they can be sneaky they can jump around very important part they can jump around they have decent defense not as tanky as navies but you know not not as paper as other ships a very beefy bonus on extenders both shield and armor and so you can use detected. but don't use both I uh, almost forgot We're about that. Attack. Don't use both. Use either shield or armor. Don't mix both. Mixing extenders is not a good idea. Just use one and We're basically get the attack. best effect out of one uh, one tank type. Although I can already I can already expect to see curse ships. Oh my god. 
yeah, we, we will have, we will see some Black Ops death mails very soon. Uh, maybe I'll get the chance to blow one up myself. We will see. Hopefully, uh, I'll definitely. Uh, I'll be very, very happy if I get to shoot at one of these ships. Maybe in, in the next couple days. We will see. After all, they're very fresh ships. This is one of the first ones I think bought. My friend was very fast to get these ships. To get the ship. So maybe it might be one of the first ones in the game. I don't know. Might be the first Panther in the game. Not not my ship, but my friends. And with this built in PVE, as we can see, it holds really well. I'm very happy with the uh, very happy with the shield performance. Still waiting for more passive shield options. When I say passive shield options, still waiting for more rigs or modules to be added that will help with the regeneration. The current regeneration is nice. I actually managed to create a Raven Navy that, that was able to pass the tank. My Macario was, wasn't able to go below 25% shield. It was just impossible. Only when I go with the implant uh, it was able to go through the tank. But, uh, but cold it was, it was tanking passively. So passive tank now is definitely a valid option and works really well on the new ships. But I would personally love to see passive tanking as an option on not only uh, the new ships, but I would love to see that on all ships. And in order to have that, we need to have a new modules or they have to fundamentally change how the overall regeneration rate works on all of the ships. But definitely still step in the right direction since as we as we see there is a push on passive tank more and more with every new update and as I already said passive tanking is fun I am all in for more options and I'm all in for more gameplay styles so pretty happy with uh, the overall ships not perfect ships they will be improved they have to be improved the speed has to be improved but overall Performance wise, yeah, I would say it is, it is satisfactory, Autopilot it definitely engaged. is satisfactory and uh, was, I had fun with, with, with the Panther here, it's a very fun ship and as we have seen with the previous ships, I would just expect to them to be improved, there's some minor things to be improved and they will be, I would say, well, they, are, they already are very important assets for fleets, but we will see what I'll do with these ships. I already have a bunch of plans for them, so I'm definitely looking forward to have fun with the Black Ops ships. And with that being said, that was a long video, <laughs> my apologies, that was a long video, but I just had a lot of things on my mind to say, and I want to cover the ship in a, in a detailed manner. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe. As always, I'll see you next time.